that it's so good to be with you this morning. <clears throat> I want to speak to us, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to speak to us this morning from the second book of Corinthians chapter 4. And um, I pray that the word of God will be a blessing to you this morning. Let's pray, beloved ones. God, we just thank you this morning. Oh, how humble it is, it is, oh God, to be called sons and daughters. That your love for us is insurmountable. We cannot even understand it. But God, this morning, I thank you, oh God, that they are here. Your people are here, oh God, to receive from you. And so, Father God, I pray that you, O oh God, would speak through me to them. Father God, may I decrease while you increase. Because, Lord, it's about you and not me. Are you but your word for your people? Father, we thank you. We thank you that you would speak to our hearts this day. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, yes, as I said, we... I'm going to talk to you from the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, second letter to the Corinthian church. And um, <clears throat> just to speak a little bit of the, the, the context as to what was going on in um, Corinth at the time. Well, of course, we know that Paul penned a first letter to the Corinthian church because of the, what was going on there at the time. There was division. There was false teachers, and so much things was going on in Corinth at the time. And Timothy also went to visit the church in Corinth relative to what was happening. And when that didn't work, Paul decided he would pay them a second visit. And so Paul visited and he was seriously rejected by the church. He was rejected to the point that he went back to Ephesus from whence he visited them. And so there were serious issues relative to Paul's apostleship. They rejected Paul's apostleship. And so Paul penned that second letter to them. Speaking to them about the issues that confronted him and an, as the church. And so, just preceding chapter 4, he had to speak to them about the new covenant because. There was, there was something, there was things that wasn't understood by the, 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 the Jewish apostle, the Judaizers, that created conflict for the church. And so Paul, Paul had to, to speak to them relative to sin. And in that letter, In chapter 3, from, from chapter 2 there about, onto, onward, he spoke to them about the superiority of grace above the law. Because one of the things that they accused Paul of is not speaking relative to faith and works. Because we understand for them, it was about works. They was deeply engraved in works. And so Paul had to speak to them concerning the new covenant. And so in chapter 3, we see that he, 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 he wrote about the new covenant. And I think it's very beautiful. It is so good. I just want us to have a little read 
Because I think we cannot go forward without looking at chapter 3 briefly. Just a little read so we would see what's happening there. So if we go from about, if you could turn to your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And we start about, let's look at from about to have a, a nice smooth read. We'll just, let's start at verse 4. And hear what Paul was saying to them. He says, not that we are adequate in ourselves. To consider anything as coming from ourselves. But he says, but our adequacy is from God. Who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. Church, that is where we are today. And he says, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death, which is the law, in letters engraved on stones, the commandments, came with glory so that the son of Israel, sons of Israel, could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face. Failing as it was, church, pay attention, I think this is real good. How will... How will the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even more with glory? For if the ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. For indeed, we had glory in this glory, in this case, has no glory because of the glory that surpasses it. For if it, for if that with which fades away was with glory, much more that which remains is in glory. And so, I think this is so beautiful for us this morning. Oh, should I say, excuse me, that I didn't tell you that I entitled this message, Being Relevant. Being Relevant. And so, because the, the Jewish apostles were stuck in tradition and law, they were not able to receive that ministry of grace that Jesus Christ brought to us as his church. And when I looked, look at the, 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 the meaning of relevance, it says relevant when I look at the Oxford Dictionary, it says relevant means closely connected or appropriate to what is being done or considered. And the second meaning, it says it appropriate to the current time, period, or circumstance of contemporary interest being relevant. And so, because the Jewish apostles, they were not relevant in the aspect that they were not connected to what Jesus Christ brought, they were still in that same place that they were when Moses, in Moses. And so much so, we are seeing today, church, that our church, the church of Jesus Christ, we are the church of Jesus Christ. And so many of us, we still focus on tradition. And so, we, we're not open, we're not willing to, 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 
to delve into or to understand where we are as a church, as the church of Jesus Christ. And so tradition blinds our eyes to the truth, blinds our eyes to what Jesus was exposing to them. And so the understanding was flawed. And church, I want to say to us as the church of Christ, we are to be relevant because the church is about Jesus Christ and what he brought, grace and truth. And so if we're not connected, if we're not relevant in this time, what would we say to oh, 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 what would we say to the world? What would we say to those who expect to hear the message of Jesus Christ? Would we still tell them about traditions? And so I have two questions for us this morning. You don't need to answer, just ponder. Question number one. Are we aware of our current time? Church, I want to say that again. Are we aware of our current time? What is happening in our world now? Are we aware of what is taking place before our very eye as the church of Jesus Christ? Secondly, if we are aware, what is our response as the church of Jesus Christ. If we are aware of where we are, the current time that we're in, what is our response as the church of Jesus Christ? Because as we saw, Paul was responding to what was happening in the Corinthian church at the time. To dispel what was not correct, what was not truth, and to teach them and to tell them what it was about, a new covenant, grace and truth. And so as a church, where are we? What are we prepared to do about the circumstances and the time that we are facing as the church of Jesus Christ? Where are we? Are we connected with Christ that we can hear the heart of Jesus, that we can, we, we, we can bring that now message to the church? We can bring that message of salvation to the people that need to hear it. Are we connected or are we still talking about something that's not relevant? And I think this, this is what is important for us as the church of Jesus Christ. Church, we need to be connected. Because the God that we serve is a God that is alive and well and that has message for us for this time. But church, if we're not connected, if we're not connected, what would our message be? What would we say to the people of God? And so I want to encourage us this morning as the church of Jesus Christ, church, we have to wake up. I want to say to us that we have to wake up because it's not, church is not about a routine. And so we have turned the church of Jesus Christ into a routine. And forget that there is a Christ that we have, we, we have said yes to. There is a God that we have said yes to. That we are willing to do his will and not ours. And so we have to wake up. We have to become relevant in this dispensation. So that the word to his people is what he wants to say to us. I'm church, I'm really, my heart is, when I speak about it, my heart really is, is, is so overwhelmed because there is a huge responsibility in us as the church of Jesus Christ. And oh, how I see people playing games with God and playing games with God's work. But church, I want to say to us, we will be held accountable we will be held accountable as the stewards, as disciples. And that is the sobering thing about it. Knowing that you and I will be held accountable for what we did and for what we did not do. For what we did not do. And it's not a very comfortable place at all. It's not a very comfortable place to be in church. Because 
what would be our excuse? What would be our excuse to God? You know, I was listening to a, a gentleman, he says, he says, I don't want to, to, for God to ask me any question. Because he says, I know I would not have any excuse. So rather than fair, let me match up. Let me do what God has called us, called me to do. And I myself, I'm in that place. Because I wouldn't have no excuse. But when the role is called up yonder, when we come before the judgment seat of, what would be our excuse? What would we say? And so church, I'm saying to us that we must get connected. We must be connected because God has called us for his purpose and not ours. And so, there is a few things from the passage that I want, the passage of focus that I want to share with us. And so I just want to read, just read briefly that passage so you would understand, if you turn your Bible to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 1, we would read up to verse 8. So if you turn your Bibles, we will read just to have a little focus on what the subject, the word of God says there. Reading from verse 1, he says, Therefore, since we have the ministry, this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is vile, it is vile to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your bond servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not of ourselves. We are afflicted in every way. Sorry, I think I go beyond my verse there. So I just want to read the last verse 7 again. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not of ourselves. And so there's a few things I want to share with us from this passage. And the first one is, a walk of faith must be one of relevance. A walk of faith must be one of relevance. And I want to look at verse Verse 1 and 2 of the same passage. He says, therefore, meaning bringing them back to what he, was, he had said before, and we, which, we, which we read a little bit of, out of it. He says, therefore, since we have received this ministry, ministry of grace and truth, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart, but we, but we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Therefore, since we have received mercy, 
we receive the mercy. And so, relevance speaks to the quality or state being closely connected, appropriate or devote. I want to say it to us again. The word relevance speaks to the quality or state of being closely connected or appropriate, devoted. And so the Jewish apostles was irrelevant. And because they were in a state of irrelevance, they created accusation. They created dissension which led to accusation because they were not connected. And so Paul here had that task of having to say to them, this is not about tradition. This is about the authentic gospel of Jesus Christ. And so church, I want to say to us this morning as brothers and sisters, relevance as the, as the meaning says, the quality, closely connected. And for us this morning, the question remains, are we closely connected? Or are we still stuck in tradition? Are we open to what the word of God wants to say to us as the church of Christ now? And so, because the Jewish apostles and because there was that fraction in the church and the fraction came about because they didn't understand. They didn't have knowledge of what was going on. And so for us as the body of Christ, and I have observed in my little time that we, we have this issue because as the church, we don't understand. We don't sit to, to have the proper knowledge of, of what we, we, we say yes to. And so because we don't have the proper knowledge of who God is, because we don't have the proper knowledge of, of Jesus Christ bringing grace and truth, we don't have the proper knowledge of our position as disciples of Jesus Christ, we create problems in the body of Christ because of lack of knowledge. So we create conflict over our lack of knowledge in the body of Christ. And the same thing was happening there. Because of the lack of knowledge, they rejected Paul's teaching because they never understood. And so you find people or church people go about saying things that they lack knowledge of. And so, oh, how we are to be very, very mindful as people who dispense the word of God. And I am very mindful. Because what we say and what we do is accountable for the lives of people. We could destroy people's life out of what we teach them. If we teach them what is flawed. And so we have to be very careful that we teach what the word of God says. Not about man's ideas and man's tradition. Just to, to, to make the, to puck up ourselves. And so Paul saying to them, therefore, since we have the ministry, this ministry, ministry of grace and truth, he said we receive mercy. And what is he talking about? Church, if we understand the mercy that we have received, because we're not deserving, what the privilege that we have, we're not deserving. What we deserve was death and punishment. But Christ came as a, the, the suffering servant, the Lamb of God. He paid the price. Church, I want to pause for a minute because sometimes when I speak about it, I don't know 
I don't know if we truly understand what God has done for us. And I believe if we, if we only have a little understanding of what God has done for us as his children, oh, how we would be more thankful. Oh, how our gratitude would be more. We wouldn't treat him like just an ordinary. Sometimes the way we treat God, I wonder. We treat God as second fiddle. We treat God... <laughs> I mean, how could we treat God the way that we treat him? We sometimes we treat God like, like a little piggy bank. When we want a little, you know, we want a little, a little, a little, um, we strap for cash or we just go and we, you know, we, 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 we punch it and we get a little cash and we go again. Sometimes we treat God like that. We treat God like he's only about the blessing and not about a commitment. And if he can't bless us, then God, where are you there? If we're going through a little, a little, a little rough time, or we're going through a little depression, we're going through a time where God wants to build character in us as the church. God wants to build, God wants to take us somewhere. If we're going through a time like that, then we start questioning God. But church, God is too perfect to make mistake. He has, he has done all that for us. Why would he forsake us? Oh, hallelujah, somebody. God would n cannot do all that for us and forsake us. To send his only begotten son. His only begotten son. The only one of this kind. That whosoever. It is a sum. That whosoever. He made it available. Paid the price in full. God took on humanity eh? just for us just for us <laughs> and, and I mean if we understand this how precious we are in the sight of God oh, oh how he cherishes us as his sons and daughters oh how he loves us amazing love we don't even understand it amazing love how can this be I'm saying, church, if we only, only if we get a little glimpse, only if we try to understand what Jesus Christ has done for us, we cannot just come and go. We cannot make this about a routine. No. I'm saying to us, we would wake up and get connected. We would understand our calling. We, we, we need to invest in our faith, church. This is not a routine. We need to be relevant. It can't be about a routine. And a, man, a gentleman was saying to me, he said, it seems like Christianity become like, you know, you, 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 on a Sunday morning, you just go and tick the box. You just tick off. So maybe at the end of the year, you could say, well, I have 20 ticks, so, you know. Remember, you know, in primary school, we saw the register, and the teacher would give us ticks, and so on. They would, and they would, our attendance, and at the end of, when they write a report, they would say, um, John Jones came 20 times. But John Jones may have been to school 20 times, but maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't know nothing. Because he probably still failed the test. And so it would be with us in the church. We would come maybe all the time, but still fail the test. Because we never seek to get connected. We never advance and, and invest in our faith. What we have said yes to. In Galatians, it says, add to your faith. He tells us at the church to add to our faith. And this is what we need to do. Always add to our faith. And Paul was seeking to to, to, to speak to them about that. And he says, we're not ashamed. He says, we renounce the things that is hidden because of shame. And he's speaking to the, false, to, to the Jewish apostles, the false teachers. He's speaking to them. He says, we renounce the things because of shame. But he says, yeah, what? Hear what? We're not walking in craftiness. He said, but you walking in craftiness, adulterating the word of God. 
Yes? Are we seeing that there, church? Craftiness or adul adulterating the word of God. But it's Paul said, by the manifestation of truth, we command ourselves to every man's conscience. Not trickery. Church, I want to say to us this morning, we are so privileged. What we speak of is the authentic gospel of Jesus Christ. Not something we make up. This is the authentic truth. And Paul said we commend ourselves to you to, to, to judge us, to, to examine us in our walk. And church, we cannot continue to walk with our mouths. It's not about that. And so many people just say, I am a Christian. But watch. But watch. When you examine our lives, Oh, 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 it's so far from what we speak. But sometimes we're so quick to tell people I'm a Christian. Christian who? Christian of what? <laughs> but church, I want to say to us, this is what we are privileged to. This is the authentic gospel. This is not some fly by night. Oh, hallelujah. Church, I want to say to us, we need to be relevant. We need to get connected to Jesus. Let's just not only speak words and say I'm a Christian and say I'm, but let our walk of faith show us who we are. Let's carry that fragrance of Jesus wherever we go, wherever our room we are. Wherever we feet tread that fragrance of Jesus Christ, the authentic gospel is supposed to go with us. So we don't have to tell people, I'm a Christian. No. They would, by, oh, by, by what we say and by what we do, they would examine us. And they, they would experience that fragrance. They would experience something different about us, our relevance. Because we're connected. We are connected. We are connected. So we don't have to tell people, I'm a Christian and so on and so forth. No, they would experience it. Our speech in our workplaces, they would experience it. And they would want to gravitate to it. But when we say I'm a Christian and what they're experiencing, <laughs> we, we push them away. Because if that is Christian, and that's not what Christian behaving, then it don't make sense. Yeah, the same thing. Same thing, same thing. Me and them doing the same thing. Yeah. It don't make sense. So church, we have to be very mindful of that. We will be held. We will be held accountable. We will be held accountable. And so, Paul tries to, 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 to really tell them. And, and I want us to look at uh, First John. If you turn to First John to me, because Paul was really trying to tell them, this is not of us. Let's go to First John. I, I want us to read this because I think that would really... First John chapter, chapter 1, because Paul was really trying to, to say to them, this is not... Brothers and sisters... What we speak of is truly, truly authentic. And, and hear what John says in 1 John. He says, you there? I hope so. He says, what was from the beginning? What we have, John said, what we have heard. What we have seen with our eyes. So you're not talking about something immaterial, you know. He's giving you evidence. For what he, the gospel, yeah? He said we have seen with our own eyes what we have looked upon and touched. Touch. Evidence. With our own hands concerning the word of life. And we, and the life was manifested. And we have seen and testified and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. 
What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. He says, these things we write so that our joy would be complete. Hallelujah. Church, <laughs> there we have it. John was trying to, with the best words possible that he could use, to persuade. And, and, and how I find it, how I find it that, that in our human context, we can truly really describe what God has done for us, you know. Because our words, it doesn't give a really true, true picture, you know. And John used the best words he can find. Because this is so marvelous. This is so wonderful. This is so... And so sometimes the, the, the people that, that, that hear about it, they find that too good to be true. They find it too good to be true because they don't understand, they don't understand it. But just want to say to us, it is authentic. It is authentic. Let's move on. Second point I want to, read, I want to speak to you about this morning. Being irrelevant causes spiritual blindness. Being irrelevant causes spiritual blindness. And the devil is the unseen hand behind all unbelieving and, un, and ungodliness. And those who follow him have in effect made, the, made him their God. Made him their God. The devil is the unseen power behind unbelief and ungodliness. Church, I want to say to us, as a church, and so even if we, 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 will, we will come and go, and yet still, our Christian walk, we, we are not, I'm sure, even I myself had to work on some things because sometimes as a believer, you're not fully persuaded. You still have doubts about things. And the enemy tries to, 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 to derail you. The enemy tries to make you have doubts even about what you believe. And so, so many Christians, they question themselves. But I wonder if this God is, is really the God he says he is. <laughs> Church. They're not fully persuaded. But oh, how if we have the proper idea, if we have the proper understanding of the God that we serve, Church, not for a moment, we would question. And someone, because of light affliction in their lives, they question God. But God, if we understand who God is, church, as a church of God, we would, we, we would walk in the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. Because we understand the God that we serve. And so when we lack understanding, a little hardship, we question God. Well, God, if you say you are who you is, well, why I have to go through that? Why I have to have why do I have insufficient money? I can't even send my children to school. God, I can't even... Are you connected? Are you relevant? Church, are you connected? We need to get connected. Connected. We need to get connected, church. That we would know the heart of God. Despite of what we go through, we would know that God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same God that took on Moses. The Israelites is the same God. And if he do it for them, he would do it for us. And you know, only this week I was telling a brother, 
he, 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 he testified to me of what he experienced God. And I was saying to him, brother, when you look back at the testimony that you had, that you expressed to me, and you examine your present situation, this is to encourage you that the same God that did it for you yesterday is the same God that you serve today. And what you're going through, hallelujah, he will deliver you, but it's in his time. Can't be about your time. We don't even know we heard from a tale. Hallelujah. But God Almighty, God's time is always the right time. A perfect God. He does, he's not wondering what we're going through. Church, I want to say to us this morning, God not wondering what you're going through. He doesn't ask you what you're going through. And sometimes we tell God, like if God lack knowledge, God, well, you see, and you see. No, 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 no. He knows what he's go, going through. And so you need to be obedient. You need to be relevant. You need to be connected with God and allow him to lead you. Because sometimes he wants to take you out from where you're there, you know. But you're so stuck in your disobedience that you, your eye blind because you can't see where God wants to take you. So you stick in that situation and you, you're fighting with God. I, tell, I was telling a brother of mine, I said, listen to me. Sometimes we have friends that God wants to get, away, get us away from, you know. But watch, we just, we, just, we just stick there. And we're fighting with God to keep them because they're bringing us down, you know, but we want to stay with them. We're not connected. Because if we're connected, we would see. We, our, our eyes would be open to where God is taking us. And so we have to get connected. Connected to God. Connected. We need to get connected, church. And the church of Jesus Christ cannot be above feelings and emotion, church. We in ourselves are grossly inadequate. We need to get connected to the true vine. The church cannot be about feelings. We got to walk in the spirit. We got to walk in the spirit. We must walk in the spirit. We must get connected. The church of Jesus Christ cannot be about emotions and feelings. When it, when it suits us right, we serve God. When it suits us right, we want God. When it doesn't suit us right, no, no, God, I, I don't want God today. I, I could stay home. God, I don't feel like it today. Uh, you could take a back seat. God, you could take a back seat. To, to, do you see this Sunday, God? You could take a back seat. And, and maybe next week, I'll check your back. Because right, what I'm going through right now, I can't really identify with you God, I can't take you on. Sometimes that's our, our actions, that's what we say to God. Because our feelings, we let our feelings drive us as Christians. But it's about knowing. It's about knowing church. Because the word of God says, be still and know. We have to know our God. And if we don't know our God, we will be driven by emotions. Church, we got to know. We have to know who God is. Hallelujah. Church, we must know. Moving quite right along. The third point I want to bring to our attention is being relevant is the only way we can truly represent that which we have received and need to be preached to the world. Let's go. Let's look at verse Five to seven. If we go back to if we go back to Second Corinthians, let's look at verse five to seven. Paul says, "For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your bond servant, servants, for Jesus' sake." For God, who said, 
light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give us, sorry, to give light, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. And so, Paul is saying to them, Paul says, we don't preach ourselves. We don't preach ourselves. Church, I want to say to us this morning, if we're not connected, it will be about us. If we don't have a relationship, whatever we say will be about us. We will get puffed up and it will be about self-driven agenda, self-importance. And it would not be about Jesus Christ. And so, the church of Christ God is about Jesus Christ. And if we're not relevant as a church, and it's about man's ideas and our, our emotion and our importance and our agenda, then it's not the church of Jesus Christ. And so you understand what would happen. Because if the main focus is about the Christ, and now it turns to self. Then, sad story for us, the church of Christ would become a dead church. And you and I, you and I, we are the church. Not the building. We are the church of Jesus Christ. And oh, how sad it would be that we would have a generation <laughs> Because their blood would be on our shoulders. We would have a generation that would grow up not knowing God because we were irrelevant. The church, we are seeing the writings on the wall, you know. Bring us back to the question I asked earlier on. Are we observant of the time that we're in? Are we relevant because we're seeing more than ever, if you're in tune with your news, you would see what is happening with our young folk. How they have to contend, what decision, the, the, the decision that they would have to make. And if we never transmit, if we never, if we never pass on the proper knowledge, ah, their blood would be on our shoulders. Because we failed to be relevant. We turned the church of God to our agenda and not the Christ's agenda. And so we, be, we become a dead church. A ritualistic church. That was them Jewish apostles. They were stuck in tradition. But we had to eyes had to be open to what God is doing in this time, so we could have a no word for the generation. It's about now, God is a God that is alive, and He always speaking to us about what we are encountering at the time. He raised the prophets, He raised the people to speak to the generations. Then. And if we connected, he would raise our people to speak to the generation now. But oh how, oh how, so many of us, it cannot be me. He had to be that, Brother Peter. God, it can't be me. I don't, I don't equip. I, I don't have what it takes. I don't bright. God, it can't be me. No, no, watch me, God. He had to be a Brother Nandi. Not some other person, not me, God. What I want to say to us, why not you? Why not you? And so we have to take responsibility for, 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 our, for, for what God has given to us. 
God has given us a facility not to be empty, but that people would come. People would come to hear what God has to say. And we are, we are all responsible to fill the chairs. Not, the, not Brother Peter, not me, not... We are all responsible to, to speak to people according to the word of God. Because it's the word that will bring them. Not how nice you look. Not how pretty you dress. Because that is the list of it. But it's, it's when you're connected, the truth, what you speak to them would be relevant. That would be able to pierce their hearts. That would be able to speak to their hearts. So that they will come. And then we will be receptive. We will be prepared. Because we connect it. We have that relationship. We understand the rules. Our responsibility as the church. It's about our responsibility. Relevance. Church, I want to say to us this morning. We cannot play games with God. The price that was paid, we can't pay for it. But he made it available that we in turn would be able to be disciples of that promise. And then he says, we are bond servants. Bond servants. And what he means? Bond servant means we are willing, self-committed to permanent service for the sake of Christ. Willing, self-committed to permanent service of Jesus Christ. God is looking for willing hearts. Willing hearts. That says to themselves and says to ourselves, no matter what the circumstance may be, come high hill, hell waters, whatever it is, I would serve the Lord. Even if I, I, I have to go to prison, whatever it is, I am permanent, I am obligated to serve the Lord. That is what we are called to do, church. And so the only thing that qualifies us to proclaim the word of God is because of what he has, we have received. The promise that we have received, that the Holy Spirit will come and reside in us, that will teach us. And if we're not walking in the spirit, but we're walking in flesh, what would we teach? What would we say? We're walking in the flesh. As a church, we must have that relationship. Because he says, Christ, who is the knowledge of God, so to be able to proclaim the truth, we must be connected to Jesus Christ and have that meaningful relationship with him. Because what we need to proclaim must come from him. We must be connected to Jesus. Because what we need to proclaim is Jesus. Jesus Christ crucified for us, for our sins. And we need, we need to get connected to him. Because what we would preach is ourselves. And so church, I want to conclude this morning but just looking for, quickly at verse 7. He said, but we have this treasure in other vessels so that the surpassing greatness, I think I want to read up to about verse 9. Listen, he said, but we have this treasure in other vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed always carrying about in our bodies the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. Church, 
This is it right there. And Paul is saying to them, who we are is not about us, but it is about the treasure that is in us as the children of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ that we say yes to, which speaks to the total and absolute insufficiency of our human beings and the total sufficiency of God. Our human humanness speak to the insufficiency, our total insufficiency. In ourselves, we can do nothing. In ourselves, we are nothing. But Paul says we have that treasure. And every one of us knows what it is to, be, to, to have treasure. Remember the, 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 uh, the treasure, the Paul of great treasure, of great price? When the man found it, he sold everything else? Treasure. Because nothing else matters. The treasure. Nothing else would ever do. And so when we find that treasure, that treasure that is in us, oh, hallelujah, the authentic gospel of Jesus Christ, not seeking to edify ourselves, but preaching Jesus and God's sufficiency, we would experience. But we must be relevant we must be connected because Jesus Christ is the absolute knowledge of God. And so we must be connected and it's only when we're connected we would experience the realness of who God is. And so many times we're struggling because we're not connected church. We're struggling in our work. We're struggling in our homes. We're struggling with our lives. We're struggling with everything in our life because we're not connected to Jesus Christ. And he wants to make the difference in our lives. And he's the only one that could make a difference in our lives. But if we're playing games with our Christian work, we would never experience the trueness of who God is. Because it's not about feelings and emotion. We are forgiven. As you are forsaken, Thank you for your listening, church. We are forgiven. I'm accepted. Yes.